Welcome back to Token Tech, everybody. Today I'm doing a follow-up video to a video I posted last week on tips and tricks to overclocking your Vega graphics card. Now, in that last video, some of you asked if I could do some gaming benchmarks to show you guys what these actually look like in games. Because on the synthetic benchmark, 3D Mark, we did see at the end of the video about a thousand points of increased performance in 3D Mark. But again, that's a synthetic benchmark. That's not a real world gaming workload. So I did just that and I started messing around with some games and trying to capture different frame rates. So I downloaded Fraps, I downloaded OCAT, that's for DX12 and Vulkan type uh, APIs. And honestly, it was a mess and I learned a lot. So first off, in some games, I'm getting about half the actual frame rate when using OCAT or Fraps. I don't know why. Um, particularly in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, when I run that using any type of capture software, OBS, Fraps, um, OCAT, it cuts it in half. So it's not accurately representing what the performance actually is. So for now, we're just going to have pictures of the um, what the benchmarks spit out, and I'll have to look into that and work on that for the future. But for now, we can see what these benchmarks are giving us. So on the left, we're looking at non-overclocked. Well, I shouldn't say that. Non-extreme overclocked. It is a plus 50% on the power target. So for most of you, that'll be sliding it all the way to the right and leaving it there. So the power limit is plus 50% and a mild overclock on the memory, not touching the core whatsoever. All right. And we got 77.6 average frames a second. If we look on the right, that's that max overclock, the one I showed you in that other video, that tips and tricks video, which was like over 1700, crazy fan curve, 150% plus to the power limit, and um, the memory overclock. We got 82.1. Now obviously you can see there, there is a performance increase with all of that, but not much, right? 77 to 82 really not that big of a deal if we look at the minimums they're the same if you look at the maximums it's very close again a 138 to 143 um so we're not getting that much for all of that power draw for all that heat for all that noise from the fans you know we're not getting that much increased performance the you know begs the question is it even worth it and if you look at the frame time chart you can see the frame times just about the same in uh for both of them so yeah we're, let's take a look at some other games we'll, we'll talk about conclusions at the end of the video all right so we'll go ahead and look at these two so this is strange brigade same configuration left and right so left is the mild overclock the one that everyone basically does and everyone should do and the right is the extreme overclock um, also just so you guys know this is all run all these games are ran at high with um, 1080p all right so high 1080p this is what we're getting now again the numbers themselves don't really matter it's just in relation to one another because this is overclocked versus mild overclock I guess we'd call it and we get very similar results as we just saw on the mild overclock 172 and on the extreme overclock 181 we're not again not getting that big of a change we're seeing very few frames difference and in, in actuality if I ran them more which I did I ran many many tests these numbers were even closer together in some cases so not that big of a difference for a lot more power a lot more heat a lot more noise is it worth it you know just keep reminding yourself of that question all right again we see pretty big jumps in um, the the synthetic but in actual games here we go. This is a bit of an older title. This is Shadow of the... Uh, sorry, not Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is Shadow of Mordor. And again, just look at these numbers. Ex it's the same trend that we've been seeing so far. Basically, no real difference. And with frame rates so high, they're imperceivable differences. Okay. And here we go with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This one was particularly uh, giving me trouble when using... OCAT, the frame rate would tank, I mean in the 40s, but then when I ran them without anything else, we got numbers like this. But again, look at this, virtually the same, 
virtually the same. This is the high, you know, 1080p DirectX 12. This is the undervolt plus power limit plus memory. This is the extreme on the right, 110 to 112. 110 to 112. So, you know, <laughs> let me just hold on a second. And this is the real kicker right here at the end. In Wildlands, many times I got the same score on both. On both the same score. Crazy stuff, right? Crazy stuff. Sometimes they're a little different, sometimes they were the same. And I'm sitting here trying to figure it out. Is it my CPU, right? I have an 1800X overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz. I have 16 gigs of memory running at 3000 megahertz and I have a Vega 64 and I have a big Noctua cooler on the on the CPU there's no thermal throttling happening I have a mesh of IC with 140 millimeter fans on the front and plenty of, of uh, exhaust there is definitely a balanced airflow going on here so I don't know there was like this was pretty shocking to me it performs really well when I overclock it in the synthetics like 3d mark and it still does but when it comes to games at least what I've seen so far using these built-in benchmarks I'm getting well in this case the same and in many cases close to the same number when you sh we should be seeing a bigger difference right a pretty big difference between both um, tests so what I'll do is I'll play the games, I will play them and find sections in each game that I can try to repeat and see if in-game this still happens. I know these benchmarks sometimes can be a little cheesy, but see if this still has happens in-game. Um, if any of you have any ideas what's going on here, please let me know, but it seems like in compute heavy workloads, like these synthetic benchmarks that are designed to stress your card maybe in editing, rendering, maybe in um, like machine learning type stuff, you know, the server space, you might see a bigger difference, right? You might need all this stuff, but in gaming, when we overclock the crap out of this card, we're not seeing that big of a difference. So would you rather have something that's super loud, pulls a lot of power, makes a lot of heat, and get basically no performance, or should we focus on undervolting you know, and overclocking the memory and stuff like that. And I think most of us would agree with the second option, right? That undervolt as much as you can, 50% power limit, overclock your memory, and you'll basically get most of the performance of an extreme overclock in games. I just want to make that clear, in games. If you're doing other workloads that take more advantage of compute stuff, you probably should still try to overclock the core. But yeah, this is what I have so far. Let me let me know what you guys think down below. Tell me if I made any mistakes. Tell me what I can improve on. Um, tell me what your results are. And uh, I'll keep messing around with stuff. Anyway, stay tuned for more stuff in technology and more stuff on Vega because I'm not done uh, messing around with this card yet. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.